Hi, dear viewers. Today, I'm joining a conversation with Natasha Woodcraft, the author of the Wanderers Count book series. It's a pleasure to have Natasha featured on P English Literature. How are you doing, Natasha? I'm great. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, it's, a pleasure. it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. Yeah. So, Natasha, could you tell us about your book, The Wanderers Count, the first book in the series of The Wanderers series? How does this book come about? What inspired you to write The Wanderers Count? Yeah, so that's The Wanderers Count. Um, it's a little bit of a different story. So it's an anti-hero story, uh, which essentially means that my main character is a bit of a bad guy. So um, it might be a little bit different from <laughs> what people are used to, but it's a really exciting sort of story to write. And he is actually Cain uh, from the Cain and Abel Bible story. Um, so yeah, um, what inspired me to write it, it was a bit of a mixture. So part of it was um, uh, Jesus's radical teaching that um, hating somebody is like the same as murdering them which um is is really radical and scary <laughs> and you just think whoa you know I'm not that bad um so that's really really hard teaching <laughs> um and I wanted to explore what that would mean through a story through, mm. through storytelling um and also part of the book was I wanted to acknowledge that sufferings and doubts are a very real part of um of our experience often whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian um you know, uh, suffering as part of life, and it's something Absolutely. that we all go through. And uh, but often we can be scared to admit that we're struggling. Um, it can be hard to ask those big questions. And I know through your own poetry, Peter, having read it, that you deal with some really big <laughs> issues and grapple with some really big, heavy stuff. Absolutely. And and I do a similar thing in this story in a different way because it's it's uh, it's it's storytelling. But um, yeah. Um, it's it's the same kind of thing. It's it's giving people permission to ask those really big questions. Um, so uh, my main character, Kane, he struggles with doubts. He struggles with temptations. Uh, he struggles with his brother and jealousy of his brother, who seems to have everything handed on a plate, who seems to have the favour of everybody um, uh, and gets more blessing and acceptance from others. And, mm. uh, and that's a struggle for him. So, yeah, it's really I wanted uh, the book to be a safe place where people can ask questions. That makes mm. sense. Um, so if you're struggling with doubts or envy or, you know, um, people having more possessions or more... Yeah, that's quite amazing. I love the scent of the, the Wanderers Con. It sounds very amazing to me. And I also want to ask you, you know, for readers who haven't read the Wanderers Con yet, and without giving much information away, could we have a sneak of what we'd expect picking up the Wanderers Con? Yeah, sure. I've, I've taken a little section out, which um, I can read to you. Um, which shows a little bit what what I was talking about. Yeah. So um, so Abel Cain's brother is a is a shepherd, as some people might know. So he talks a lot about sheep. <laughs> Fun topic. Um, so he says this: um, We're like lambs, Cain. Uh, we're born reliant on our parents. Yet as we grow, we become more independent. We may wander away, trusting in ourselves when we're not yet trustworthy. God doesn't want us to wander. Like a good shepherd, He desires to keep us safe. He wants to keep us from walking dangerous paths. Sometimes to do that, he'll need to use his staff to bring us back in or even to discipline us. I've not tried to wander, Cain says, if you would put it that way. I have, if I've been withdrawn, it's due to circumstances, due to suffering and chastisement that I have endured. A lamb rarely tries to wander, Abel said quietly. It happens when they take their eyes off their mother. Then once they realise as they lost, they bleat loudly, calling for someone to help them. So I should bleat loudly. Yes. To whom? To your creator, Yahweh. Tell him your concerns. Ask him for his way to be made known. Trust him that he cares for you and he desires what's good for you. But I have no confidence that he does care. I oh. felt unbidden tears well in my eyes. He has shown me no favour. If he cares, wow. why did he allow me to suffer so much? My why God. is he preventing me fulfilling my purpose? I'll leave it there. <laughs> You'll have to read it to find out what happens. <laughs> <laughs> wow, those are some deep words there. Some mm. deep words. That's powerful. That's very prudent and evocative. Well, often we don't 
I was saying, you know, we don't feel like we can express those things yet. Mm. Yeah? Um, and we, we kind of keep things to ourselves. And I think it's really important to be able to express those concerns. And, mm. and uh, so I try and put them into the words of my character so that, you know, we can, we can go through, we can... Wow. Wow, that's a very great, that's a great technique. So I love that idea and the setup. Sounds very interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Now, I also want to ask you, Natasha, you know, as authors, we all have different ways of reacting to feedbacks and criticism of our works. I'm curious to know your yeah. opinion about criticism. How do you react to negative criticism of your book if you've ever had one in time past? Yeah, so I sent um, my manuscripts out to, to beta readers to get some early feedback. Yeah. And that was a new thing because I, I, I'm sure you know when you, you know your, your book, your work, it feels a bit like a child yeah. <laughs> and you're quite protective of it. And Absolutely. so it, it can, when you get criticism back, it can be like, no, that's not what I meant. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, so I, I sent it out, but it's a really important part of the process, I think. And so I wasn't very good at receiving it at first, but I've kind of gotten used to it now. Um, oh. And you know, I, I've sort of look for feedback now and I look for learning opportunities. And um, once I could kind of get over myself, I could kind of stay, take a step back and go, mm -hmm. okay, I can see what they're saying. Maybe I need to improve that or, or, or just that. Um, and I'm still learning all the time. And I think it's that it's take it as an opportunity to learn and to move on and to do better next time. So, yeah. Wow, that's great. I love your intake on these. I love your opinion about criticism. That sounds very amazing to me. Then Natasha, you also have another book. You have The Wanderer Reborn, which is the mm -hmm. second book in the series of The Wanderer series. Now, without giving spoilers, could you tell us a bit about the making of The Wanderer Reborn as well? Absolutely. So they were originally one story. So I originally wrote one big book, um, which was really long. <laughs> and oh. it was one story. So really they're two halves. So you, the Wanderer Scorned is the first half and the Wanderer Reborn is the second half. And it's really yeah. the same story. But I oh. have two different points of view, two different main characters who you can see on the covers. Yeah. Um, so uh, the Wanderer Scorned kind of ends on a cliffhanger and it ends on, on kind of a low. Uh, it's, it's, it's painful and we leave the family facing uh, grief and loss and feeling like they're in despair. And so the Wanderer Reborn starts there. Uh, it starts with this kind of really hard situation that the family are having to navigate. And you kind of think, ah, is anything going to, you know, come out of this that's okay. good? Could anything possibly come good out of this situation? And so it asks that question. The kind of tagline for it is, uh, is can there be hope in the aftermath of murder? So that gives you a little clue as to where the other book goes. Oh um, my gosh. <laughs> so so um yeah, so Wonder Reborn is is it's all about hope. The story is about hope and and the 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 reviews I've had for that have been have been great. I mean people have said it's just it's just so so hope filled. It's a it's a more traditional kind of redemptive narrative story. Um so yeah, it's it's really good. Also, I, I'm a songwriter, so I don't know if you realise that, but um, I started songwriting before I started writing books. So, um, and I pitched that character Arwan as a songwriter as well. So through wow. the book, she sings lots of songs, which is kind of nice. And I I um I recorded a lot of those songs and I've put them on my YouTube channel. Oh, so as wow. the readers are, as the readers are reading through the book and they come across a song, they can listen to it on YouTube. That's, so that's beautiful. Kind of fun. <laughs> that's very great a little added extra <laughs> absolutely and i left a link in the description part of this conversation to the youtube channel where viewers can check out natasha's songs i would love to watch you sing that would be amazing yeah please do that yeah there's <laughs> quite a few of them yeah that's great thanks so much for sharing about the second book series now i'm also curious to know if you experience any challenges while writing your book if there is any could you share with us what challenge it is and are you ultimately overcame it yeah, so um, as I mentioned at the beginning, that the yeah. first one is an anti-hero story and that has a real big set of challenges because um, normally when you're writing a story, you're starting off with a kind of flawed character and they need to find their way and they need to overcome their difficulties and, and by Absolutely. the end, they're kind of a better person. Yeah. Um, with an anti-hero story, you're actually doing the complete opposite. <laughs> and so all of those kind of techniques that you learn for writing stories, you kind of have to throw them out the window a little bit. Um, and you're starting with a character who's who's quite good and you're actually watching him fall. And um, and that's a real challenge to write. And it was really difficult. Um, yeah. But I just actually, in, in terms of how I overcame that, 
Um, obviously, I, I am a Christian, and so I, I kept going back to the Bible text and seeing where it was going. What was the what's the point of the original story? Mm. Um, and, and just taking it to God and asking Him for help. So I did get stuck at a few points along the way, and I would just take it to Him, ask for help, and He would always guide me to the next step. Um, wow. And then when I got to write the second half, <laughs> it was wow. just, it was really exciting. And that, that flowed so much more easily. And it was really, um, yeah, that was a, just a lovely story to write. So That's um, beautiful. Yeah. I'm, I'm also curious. I don't know. How many series do we have? Is it still continuing or we're only going to have two series? Uh, yeah, so the Wanderers series is still continuing. I'd say I initially wrote these two as, as one book and I thought that was it. And then when I was in the editing process, um, they, they they are kind of within a what I call a sandwich story. But it's a bit mm. like, you know, well, you know, in Shakespeare, where you have a play within a play a lot of the time. Absolutely. Um, and you, so, so you've got one play going on, but then there's another play going on and they kind of intertwine. And you've got yeah, this absolutely. Going, it's a little bit like that. So I have oh. I have a story within the story. And so I am now writing the third book, which is um, carrying on from the the overarching story before these two characters kind of come in. Oh. So um, I'm writing that right now. Um, I'm also writing uh, a completely different series. Um, well, I've just completed the first one and that's being sent off to publishers at the moment, which is a young adult series, which is a kind of um, a, a little bit like a cross between Narnia and the Hunger Games, which sounds really strange. I don't know how mm. else to put it. But it's kind of set in another world, but it's also dealing with these kind of challenges. What's it like to be a teenager? All the struggles and temptations that they face. I've really got heart to write into that. Oh. So, um, so that's the other thing I've been doing. <laughs> it's beautiful. I, I really love the sound of your book. It sounds quite intriguing to me. I'm quite excited to hear about this. Now, Natasha, could you tell us what publishing is like for a published author like yourself? What are the challenges you've encountered in terms of marketing your books? What are the mediums you've utilized so far in promoting the Wonder Book series? Yeah, well, marketing is really hard, isn't it? <laughs> it's really hard. And I think when you're a creative person, mm. it's the last thing that you want to do. You just I just want to hide and write books. I don't want to do marketing. <laughs> so it's really tough. And, and particularly in this in this Wanderer series genre. So it's kind of in the genre of of, of historical fiction. Mm. But also a kind of subgenre of biblical fiction, and and oh. that's quite small. Um, it's kind of niche, and there aren't really that many readers. So, kind of reaching into that is is a bit tricky. Um, mm. I'm on I'm on social media a lot, so I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, you know, um, Goodreads. But I I think it is easy to kind of sell your soul to social media. <laughs> I don't know how you feel about that. It can be hard. <laughs> And it's really, really important to take a step back and actually go, why am I doing this? Mm. I'm doing this because I want to share a message. Absolutely. I'm not doing it because I want to sell books. Actually, Absolutely. that's it's great. If I sell books, great. Mm. But that's not why I'm doing it. I just, I want to share a message. I want to help people to grapple Absolutely. with these yeah. issues. So for me, marketing is hard, but it's a kind of necessary thing. I try and set aside a small amount of time each week to do it. And then make sure that I have separate writing time and try not to let them cross over too much. Otherwise, you won't ever write or just spend your whole time marketing. <laughs> but I do find that actually in terms of selling books, mm. um, doing it in person is much nicer. Like if I, can meet people, if I can go and do events, if I can do talks, mm. things, speaking, yeah. things like this, it's, it's so much nicer to just kind of meet people. And if I talk about my book and I'm excited about it, Absolutely. they're much more likely to want to buy it than if they've seen a Facebook post. So. Yeah, so I'd, I'd recommend that for any authors. If you're struggling and you're feeling like it's a treadmill and you're kind of fed up with it, just try and go out and do some talks. Um, mm. Try and book yourself in places and, and, and get to know people and be friendly. And you'll probably sell more books that way. In That's, true. That's true. I love your thoughts about this. That sounds very amazing to me. That's great. Now, Natasha, please show the book to the camera. I know we already have samples, <laughs> digital samples. That is already obvious. Oh, it's a Oh, 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 hang oh, on. oh, 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 I can see, I can <laughs> okay. see, yeah, it's one dress <laughs> off. Yeah, it's and coming up, one. the second okay. one. Yeah, and lo lovely covers, and they look very amazing. Beautiful. Yeah, they're nice, aren't they? Beautiful, <laughs> yeah, beautiful. That's amazing. So, Natasha, is there anything you'd love to share with the viewers about both books that we didn't mention in this interview, and you'd love the viewers to know? 
Uh, well, I, I mentioned the songs in the book. Um, there's also, the, the lovely thing is I, I also love writing poetry, like yourself. Mm. <laughs> so I have, so the books are a nice mixture of, of ordinary prose and poetry and songwriting. Wow. Um, and um, also I, I have dinosaurs. If anyone likes dinosaurs, <laughs> there's some of those in there. <laughs> so yeah, there's kind of I hope a little bit for everyone. Um, but yeah, I, I'm kind of trained in in theology, so my first training was in theology. Um, so there there is a lot of deep content in there. But mm. I try, and the whole point is that I want to bring it across in a story because nobody wants to sit down and read a textbook in the evening. Well. I don't. <laughs> so, you know, but we can all engage with the story. So, Absolutely. yeah, I hope people can enjoy it. That's great. That's great. I really love the sound of this. Now, Natasha, as a published author, what sort of advice do you have for other writers who are still struggling with publishing a book? What do you tell people in this category? Mm. I think the most important thing is to learn your craft. So um, it, it can be hard if you get rejections and things. It can take a long time to get a book published. Yeah. Um, even if you self-publish, you're still going to get criticism, as we've talked about. Um, but just because you get rejections doesn't mean that you don't have a good story. It doesn't mean that uh, you haven't got a story to tell. So persevere, but also use that time and use that opportunity to learn your craft. And by that, I mean take courses on on how to improve your writing, read lots of good books, don't read rubbish books, read good books. <laughs> you, you'll, you'll kind of, you know, you'll, you'll take on the information Absolutely. and you'll be able to, it will, it will flow into your writing. And, yeah. so, and surround yourself with the support group. So I've got, um, I have a prayer support group, but I also have a writing support group, a critique group. Mm. Um, I've mentioned beta readers um, and, and do that and get as much feedback as you can and really take those opportunities to learn. And I think we're learning all the time. And I don't think as writers we ever stop learning. Um, so yeah, do, do lots of courses. There's loads of stuff online that's free. If you can't get to a college, you can do, you can find things. Absolutely. Um, and and yeah and you will improve and you will get there so perseverance and and learning the craft um and and i've mentioned being a christian if you're a christian you know take it to god and ask him to help you because yeah he wants you to you know if he if he's given you a story he wants to help you get it out there so he mm. will help you so so ask yeah. him and, and trust him to do that yeah i, lo I love the fact you mentioned that <laughs> i love the fact that you mentioned that and i'm hopeful i love your advice and i'm hopeful the viewers including myself would love to utilize it so natasha where can readers interested viewers where can they get a copy of your book or what platform are they available on for purchase yeah so it's available worldwide so you can um you can get the paperbacks um uh in bookshops you can you can order them anywhere um wow. they're, they're not going to be on the shelf but you can you can take the title and you can order it um yeah. also the most people find it easiest to get it off amazon they are available on amazon and that's yeah. in kindle and in paperback if you happen to be in the uk which i don't know if it, how many of your viewers are in the uk if you happen to be in the uk you can order straight from my website and you that's can get great. a signed copy yeah. and then that's when i'm famous you can sell it on ebay for loads of money uh, <laughs> but my website's got it's just natashawoodcraft.com there's loads mm. of extra stuff on there you can download uh, a free sample of the first chapter if you want to check it out before you buy it and that's on my website as well um, and also if you sign up for my uh, newsletter you'll get sent a free book so not one of these two but a different a different free book so lots of ways that you can connect with me and i'd love to hear from you Oh, that's amazing. And all those social media channels. <laughs> and I've left a link in the description part of this conversation to Natasha Woodcraft book links for interested viewers who love to get a copy. So thank you so much, Natasha, for accepting the invitation to be featured on P English Literature. It's a pleasure having you on the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's It's been great to talk to you. And yeah, um, yeah I hope uh, stay in touch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you.